Hey everybody, Julianne Hartman here with Healing Journeys Today, and boy do I have a treat for you. I have the full length version of Mike Hesh's Healing Journey. Wow, wow, wow. Wait till you see this. Is there anything too big for God? I don't think so. Check it out. In the year 2000, I noticed that I had a pimple here and I didn't think anything of it. You know, it was just, it was just constantly a little itch here. Of course, at, at night I'd come home, take my shirt off and I'd have to investigate because you're just constantly aware of it. I think Mike had the sore for a while before I even really noticed it. It just was a little red bump and it's just kind of like a skin blemish. Through that year, it started getting red and then it got larger and larger, uh, like a small area about the size of my finger, and I noticed that it wouldn't heal over. I began to photograph it because I believed that God was going to heal me and I wanted to document the dates. I prayed for it, I believed in healing, and it still didn't go away. The desert oasis of Tucson, Arizona, sits in a sheltered valley. Here, Mike and Caroline Hesch joined a non-denominational church, submitting themselves to a strong-willed pastor. In time, they became victims of religious ideas as malignant as the tumor that threatened to consume both of their lives. I was part of this ministry for like 20 years. They had taught healing, but it was all uh, performance-based doctrine. We were taught, like in John 9, that uh, God does not hear sinners. So if we were asking for prayer or asking the Lord to heal or do something in our life, if we were in sin of any kind, uh, he wouldn't be able to answer our prayer. Oh, you must be sinning. Um, oh, you're not doing God's will. Oh, you're in rebellion to the pastor. Oh, this, oh, that. Everything was a reason why I wasn't getting better. And he had talked to our pastor about it. And the pastor said, well, that's nothing that herbs can't heal. It's a nutritional problem. I seem to just be getting worse and worse and worse. When it wouldn't go away, my pastor said, why don't you go to the doctor? Then we can uh, pray specifically for God to show us exactly what it is. So that's when Mike made an appointment with the dermatologist to have it checked out. And he comes in and he looks at it and he didn't look at it for maybe five or 10 seconds. He said, excuse me, I'd like to go get my colleague. Um, and then they did the doctor thing, you know, where they, mm-hmm, uh-huh, and they're, you know, with their little uh, thing probing around the edge. And they didn't say anything in front of me, but I could tell that it was kind of serious. He left the room and he said, the nurse will uh, direct you, you know, what to do. When I got to the counter, she handed me a piece of paper and she told me, you have an appointment, and it was like two weeks out. And I can't remember if he was behind me, the doctor that saw me, or in the hallway passing through, he just stopped. And he said, no, that's not soon enough. You know, and I could sense the fear. So he said, I'll take care of this. And well, the appointment was two days out from the day I was there. And I thought, whoa, uh, to get a doctor, to a surgeon to see you in two days, I mean, you know, something's happening here. I looked at the sheet that the doctor fills out and he checked the diagnosis. He called me on the phone and after the appointment and he said that the doctor uh, said you need to have surgery right away to have that removed and wrote up a little note and this is what it was, a malignant neoplasm. And she said, well, I'll look it up and I'll call you back. So here I'm driving to work and she calls me back very seriously, she says, Mike, it means that you have malignant neoplasm cancer. She said, well, it's not benign. In other words, okay. it's something that's actively growing. Now I'm thinking, wow, I've got something pretty serious here. A little bit of fear came in, but because it wasn't huge, I really felt like, you know what, I know Mike believes uh, in healing and that the Lord can take care of this. Once I talked to her, I told the pastor, I said, what do you think I should do? He said, you know, Mike, you can do whatever you want. 
uh, but he said, I said, well, they want me to cut it off. He said, well, and he didn't tell me, you know, he didn't say you can't do it. He said, well, that's not God's way. Uh, we believed that um, if you went to the doctors for anything like that to have it removed, you're sinning. And if you're sinning, then you can't trust the Lord for healing it. And he said, but the choice is yours, whatever you want to do. But he said, you know, he said, I would just counsel you not to do anything while you have that fear. Yeah. I called the, the doctor that they had made the appointment with and I canceled it that day. And so it's just like, okay, you know, I was still believing, but still a little bit hesitant. Like, it's not that big. It wouldn't be any big deal to get it, you know, burned off or however they were going to chop it out and be done with it. The next day, I'm coming to work. It's like 8.30 in the morning and my cell phone rings. I answer the phone. This, I'm Dr. So-and-so. I diagnosed you with this yesterday. They just told me you canceled your appointment. I said, that's correct. I did. And he said, you can't do that. That I said, well, I can do that. And he said, I want you to know, I'm writing here down in my records that you're warned of, this is a very deadly thing that you're dealing with and that you've been warned by me. And then I was like really scared. Well, that following February, I guess it would be 2002, got very sick with the flu. And when that happened, it was just like the tumor, it just started growing out as a tumor. I remembered what the guy said, that if you let it go, it could metastasize, which I, I think in layman's terms means it can just turn into something else or like mutate into some other form or go throughout the rest of my body or something. I'm watching and bandaging and as he's starting to get weaker and weaker and this tumor is getting bigger I'm thinking why doesn't he just get this thing cut off but at the same time as I'm thinking that and I would vocalize that to him at times just like oh, you know this is it you know this is just getting worse you're getting you know sicker just let's get this cut off and I would always go back to you know I I have to do what I feel is right in my heart and I just don't have a peace from God about getting that cut off, you know, because the Bible says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. I know that's not the solution. I don't have that peace in my heart. But as he would refuse, stubbornly refuse, and continue to stand on the word and God's promise of healing, um, I would try and agree with him and stand with him. And so for the next like five years, um, I went through this roller coaster at the church. I would get over one hurdle and then the bar would go up a little higher and then here would be another thing that was uncovered that I wasn't doing right and that how could God hear me being a sinner. The whole time as it starts getting worse and worse, the tumor just, it would stink. You would, we'd wrap it with uh, paper towels and we'd have them soaked, spray some herb tinctures to try and help cut down on the smell of it and it would ooze and it would bleed and we're wrapping it in saran wrap and then that would fill up with the ooze and then we'd have to drain that off and change it out and the tumor was just feeding off the blood in his body. His whole complexion was like gray. His heart rate for like months was in the 90s. Oh, it was just, it was horrendous. I just noticed I just start, started slowly losing energy, like somebody just letting the air out of me. So this tumor started getting so big and very heavy, we've got to find some kind of sling or whatever. So I end up going to the store and buying a couple bras. Cut out one side, and I would just wear that as like a harness to support, to support it over here. It just, it just wasn't a good thing, you know. This was something that we just had to live with, and eventually God would heal. But I'm watching Mike's life being sucked out of him. I didn't know what was going on. I just knew that things in my body weren't working right on the inside. And, and then this thing I had that it was growing, it grew off what I, I call it a tentacle or like this arm I could see like growing out underneath my skin in there and spreading out and it was nasty. It was just a, like a manifestation of 
of the devil, which it really was. You know, the Bible says that the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And that's what he was doing. He was just sucking my life out. He's d destroying, uh, you know, any productivity in my life. He was stealing away my happiness and my joy. I do have to say, though, that it was all by my consent because I didn't take a stand against him, you know. And at that point, Mike was so sick. It was just, it was very hard for me to leave him all day when I would be working and I would call Mike and I could just tell when he'd answer the phone like he was just like, I don't know if I'm going to come home and find him alive. One scripture that really encouraged me was Proverbs 4, 20 through 22, where it says, My son, attend unto my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes, but keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. I just decided, since I didn't have anything else to do during the day, that I was just going to, every moment that I had, I was going to get into God's Word. And I knew that I was, I was short on the life and I needed help to all my flesh. I was flipping through the channels, trying to find someone to listen to while I was getting ready for work. And I came, went through the channels and there was the guy yelling and the guy doing this and I didn't want to listen to that and then I landed on this channel where this guy was sitting in a chair talking calmly and he said, Today I'm beginning a brand new series and I'm going to start talking about a teaching that I've entitled You've Already Got It. By that time I'd walked back into the bathroom and I was getting ready and I said, man that's a stupid name for a study. And but I didn't turn the channel, and I, I just kept listening to it. That God has already done for you everything that you need done. And by the end of that half hour, I was hooked. And so here she offered us some CDs. And it was like, okay, yeah. And my wife listened to them first. A whole new Bible was opened up to me for seeing what uh, the Bible really was teaching and what I had believed and the things I was believing were not according to scripture. And begin to start looking at everything from a standpoint where it's already accomplished and you aren't trying to get God to do something, but rather you're just appropriating what he has already provided. That mindset will totally revolutionize the way you receive from God. And then, uh, you know, passing it on to Mike saying, you got to listen to this. And this is kind of a miracle for me as well. It shows you how far, the, how quickly the Lord can deliver you when you're willing just to follow what His Word says and what He says in His Spirit over some legalistic thinking. The average prophecy that you're going to get in most churches is all about God is going to do something great. There is coming a great move of God. We are going to see something happen. But you never hear people very much talk about what has already happened. And I believe that instead of getting this mindset of trying to obtain victory, it really makes a difference if you understand that through Jesus, we've already obtained victory. It's a done deal. Yeah, I do. I've already got it. I was blessed in two ways. One, I was, all these things I had been studying in the last, you know, especially in the last few weeks, but six months prior, I was getting, you know, I believe it was God who had her bring that to me because it was just like he was saying all these things in a little different way than the Word says them, but he was saying the same thing that the Word says. I remember getting this revelation about uh, James chapter 1 uh, where it says about being tossed to and fro uh, like the waves of the sea, and I thought, you know, that is so much me. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. It says, let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. And so I just said, you know what? I don't have to focus on two things. I can just focus on that. And when I did that, that's when I learned that I was able to receive from the Lord. That it wasn't him withholding. I already had it. He wasn't withholding. In other words, God through Jesus Christ was not the variable in the situation. It was me, it was my unstable thinking. 
The Bible says that by Jesus' stripes, I was healed. I am not going to receive another thing that the devil is going to throw at me to keep me in bondage to not receive my healing. Just drawing this line in the sand saying, nope, it's going no further than this. That night was a turning point of his healing because even though we still had to mess with the tumor, it was still just as bad as before. It was just kind of like, he didn't, he didn't look at it anymore as that. He, he was seeing himself as healed. It was about two weeks later and suddenly we're changing and I have cut out the same length of the paper towels that we've needed to before to wrap this. And suddenly it's just like we're folding it up and the, it's just like we can cut this much off of the paper towel. We don't need as much to, to wrap it. And I said, Mike, this is getting smaller. And I said, well, of course. I said, God's healed me. It's got to get smaller. It can't, nothing else can happen. This might be hard to get a hold of, but I just forgot about it. You know, even though I would deal with it twice a day or more dealing with it, you know, having that uncomfortable bra you got to adjust and move around just didn't fit right. And uh, it's like, it was like, it was gone. You know, I'm, I'm healed. I don't care what it looks like on the outside. By Jesus stripes, I was healed. That's it. All of Andrew's teachings were already confirming the things that Mike had seen in the Word, but it was like a second witness for him that, yes, this is the way it's, it is. This is what God said, and he, it helped him to stand even more on the healing. I actually, I don't know, somewhere around May, I didn't have to wear the bra anymore. Each time as we're changing it, it's like, Mike, this thing is getting smaller and smaller. It was just like it was shrinking. So it was less and less that we had to deal with until it's a little thing like this and then he can change it himself, of course, and no longer was wearing the support. And it's just like, this thing is gone. By August, it was nothing. It was just this little bump, a, a scar on my chest here. I was made whole by Jesus Christ and this is the only direction my body can go. Devil, you can't have me. I've already been bought. For eight years, Mike Hesch believed and prayed for his healing with no results. In desperation, he finally drew a line in the sand between the Word of God and his own unstable thinking. He chose to believe the Word, that healing had already been provided by God's grace. Andrew's teaching confirmed and encouraged him, and the malignant tumor disappeared in seven months. After his healing, Mike felt strongly that there was more he needed to learn about standing firm on the Word of God. He and Caroline sold their home in Tucson and moved to Colorado Springs to attend Karis Bible College. Their journey of grace and freedom has just begun.